Yeah. That is how I enter professional mode, by the way. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Jono, and welcome to episode 5.5 of Sparky Game Engine, where we're going to take a look at more of an extension to episode 5. So, in episode 5, we created this matrix class that we had over here. It was capable of handling a 4x4 matrix and whatnot. Um, today, I'm going to introduce something else, like more of a kind of a cool trick we can use to address the data at our matrix a bit differently, okay? So... Right now, what we have is this elements float. And if we want to do something like, I don't know, I want to change an individual element of the matrix. I want to be like, you know what, or I want to retrieve something. I want to be like position.elements at index. Maybe I want like, I don't know. Okay, let's just say this is, this is our translation matrix, right? So we know that the 12th, 13th, and 14th um, index are X, Y, and Z respectively. So I can be like 12, let's set that to two, right? or I can access 12 in the same way. I have to call by 12, right? What a matrix for is really, if we go over here to this drawing board and we take a look at it, right? Is it's obviously just, um, it's obviously just a bunch of values, right? It's a bunch, well, it's a bunch of values that happens to be 16 different values. Um, yeah, here we go, 16 different values. But as you can probably notice, they are grouped into columns, okay, especially because we're in column major ordering, right? And these columns, right, are each VEC4s, okay? So these VEC4s, there's four VEC4s essentially, and we might, we might be like, you know what, I want to retrieve this VEC4, and I want to address it, like I want to basically interpret it as being a vector 4 yeah? That's all I want it to be. I just want it to be a four-component vector. I don't want to have to deal with four variables, or I don't want to have to deal with these indices separately. I want to be like, I want the, I want this column, and I want it to be a vec four. Okay. So, what someone might do, okay, um, is something along the lines of, they might make a, like a, a vec four, and let me just include vec4 real quick. Um, they might be like, let's make a vec4 called get column. It'll take in an index and what it will do is just simply return a brand new vec4 consisting of elements um, elements at index uh, basically this, right? Where you have elements at index then plus one then plus two, then plus three, and then of course you need to uh, multiply that index. I can't see the keyboard. Multiply that index by um, four, okay? So someone might do something like this and it would pretty much work, right? It would do that. But the, unfortunately what it's doing is it's actually constructing this, okay? It's constructing a brand new VEC4. The problem with this is it's going to allocate a whole new block of memory, it's going to fill it with the same data that we already have stored here, and it's going to uh, spend time on both the construction and the memory allocation and all of that stuff, and it's just, it's redundant data that we don't need. All we want is a different way to address or interpret this data. So in order to understand how we're going to solve this problem in an elegant way, um, you have to really understand how memory works and how this is actually stored in memory. If we take a look at this, um, what we've what we've done is we have um, four by four floats. So we have sixteen floats. Okay, so sixteen floats. Yeah, floats are four bytes each. By the way, so sixteen times four is sixty-four. So we've got a block of memory, which is all this and it is a total of 64 bytes long, okay? And there are obviously subdivisions here or whatever. You can lay this out however you like so that essentially we have the very first index in the array and we have the last index of the array, but since each float is four bytes, it will be byte number 63, okay? If zero was the first one of where this gets allocated in memory. So all this is, all this, I should probably move this down because it's in the way of the face cam. But all this is in memory is it's just, it's literally just a heap of memory, okay? How we access that memory, 
how we decide to be like, I want to access, because remember, we're just, we're just a bunch of elements, right? So how we decide to um, be like, I want to access elements at index five, for example, yeah, um, all of that is, su it's basically subject to our interpretation of it. So if we have a float array, what that tells C++ is that each element in our float array is four bytes. Thus, if we want to retrieve the sixth element, which is index five, it simply is going to say four times five, and that is 20. So it's going to look up byte 20, which is, for example, um, over here, and it's going to grab it and plus, you know, four bytes. So four bytes starting at byte 20. It's going to grab that and that's going to be E at index five. Okay, that's, that's simply how it works. It's very simple. So what we want to tell it is 64 bytes. Isn't that the same size as four vec fours? Why, yes, it is. Because remember, a vec four simply has four floats. Four floats equals... Uh, 16 bytes and 16 times 4 is 64 so it takes up the same amount of memory so what we want to say is when I do something like e at 5 right let's just say I'm like I want to get column number 2 or something let's just say 3 because 2 is kind of in the middle of this so let's just say I want to get column number 3 yeah what we want to do is we want to be like column number 3 that'll be starting at index 48 uh, which is like somewhere over here. Yeah, and how much how big is a vec for it's 16 bytes So we'll end over here. So that'll go all the way up to 63 right from 48 inclusive to 63 and we're going to return that block of memory Okay, and then within that of course, it'll be divided into four Okay, because X Y Z and W so all we're saying is we want to access this same memory but we want to interpret the divisions of it and what we actually retrieve a bit differently, okay? So how do we basically give the same amount of, the same block of memory to different types? How can we do that? Well, we can do that by using a union, okay? So with a union, we can essentially specify s different ways to interpret the same block of memory, okay? So I can be like, um, in this case, I can be like, this union will have um, float elements, right? And it will have, let's just say, 16 of them, right? Um, obviously, right, yeah? And then the equivalent in VEC4, which we'll call columns, is going to be four columns. And then remember, these two give us 64 bytes of memory. They have the exact same memory. So that's why it's easily unionized, right? It's easily addressable. We're just changing the way it gets addressed um, or the way it gets interpreted, okay? So that's the idea. That's what we want to do, okay? There is a bit of a trick with getting vec force to work and then we'll talk about that when we reach it. But this is essentially the way. We're, we're, basically, we're basically providing two different interpretations for the same block of physical memory, okay? Let's implement this. So to do this, I'm going to go into mat4, into the header, and I'm going to grab, I'm going to basically wrap our elements in a union, okay? So there we go, float elements, and then I'll put in vec4 columns 4, okay? This is going to give us an error, okay? And, it's, and IntelliSense is going to tell us that invalid union member class Sparky has a disallowed member function, okay? This might be a bit confusing error. If we try and build this, we'll fail, okay? And it'll actually say that um, illegal union member, so VEC4 has a user-defined constructor or non-trivial default constructor. What it wants is the default default constructor. So what happens is when you create, um, we actually have a default constructor. Well, it might seem like a default constructor. We have an we have like a, an empty constructor, right? A constructor that just takes in no um, parameters, right? What it needs is a constructor that is actually the default constructor. So if we had no constructor at all, that would basically be the default constructor. It's kind of like the default copy constructor. If we don't specify a copy constructor, one will be provided for us. Similarly, if we don't construct, if we don't specify a constructor, we will still get a constructor, okay? So what we want to do is specify a constructor like this and set it equal to default. 
okay? This will actually be a default constructor, okay? So if we do, uh, yeah, so if we do build this, um, we'll get another problem. And this is probably because we've already got a default constructor. So we need to say goodbye to that. Um, go back to, um, where are we? Back for .cpp. Uh, we'll say goodbye to that. Lol, we only set the first two as well. Oh, that's terrible. You probably should be more attentive at that code. Um, we'll go ahead and build it. And um, where are we? I lost us. Yeah, where are we? Here. Yeah, so there we go. And that will work. You can see we get no build errors. We get an IntelliSense errors. Don't worry, they're not real errors. IntelliSense is very confused about what what we're trying to do. It doesn't matter. But the point is, when you create a mat for where's our back for yeah when you create a constructor and you mark it as default in this way right it's going to um it's going to actually specify the default default constructor which is what we get if we have no constructor at all okay and that's what it requires and that is it so intellisense will still be a bit mad but don't worry if we run this for example it'll still run and everything will still work as expected okay so no problem there. So now that we've done that, um, what can we do with this awesome union that we have? Well, glad you asked because apart from setting something like this, I can pull out um, a, I can be like, I want a vec4, I want a column. I can be like, give me column number position dot column. Why is get column still a thing? Where are we? Get column. So let's get rid of get column because that was the bad way that we don't want to do. Or in fact, let's leave it in there because I'm going to show you guys a bit of a comparison. Um, and then we'll go back to main and columns and then we should be able to um, address this as column. I don't know why it's not letting me. That's a bit weird. What? Let's go back to this. So I, I called it columns. Is that not what I columns? Okay. I don't know why it was wasn't like I guess Intel it was an IntelliSense error, so it wasn't showing up here. But I can address it like this, and then I can be like, um, let's print this column, right? Um, and then I will comment this out. And you can see that we can get the final column, which we know is two, three, four, one. So there we go. Now the big, the key difference between this and say, uh, if I used, um, we'll say column zero, column one, right? So we'll print them both out as well. But the key difference between this and just simply going get columns is there's there's a there's a huge difference, okay? Because obviously get column is going to generate a whole new um, thing, which is going to be absolutely annoying. So if I run this, we should get the same result, right? But two things I want to mention, yeah? If we grab um, the memory address of position.elements12, which we know is position.columns3.x, right? If I grab this and I just want to take a look at the memory address of that, um, and I also want to... Uh, so that's position.elements12, and then I also want to take a look at position dot columns three dot x you'll see that these memory addresses are absolutely identical right they are the act they are the actual same addresses whereas if I did this yeah well I mean clearly that's not even gonna let's um set this to c one dot x yeah these are gonna be completely different oh they're actually the same what C1 dot X is the same as position dot what? No, they're not the same. What were they the same? Or was that did I just say it wrong? Anyway, these are completely different. Yeah, that's the idea. They're completely different because they're it's constructed an absolutely new thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna right click on this and go show and Intelli show IntelliSense errors. No, thank you. Um, but anyway, that's the idea. Okay. So. Um, one more thing that we can do to check out the difference between this is if I just set a breakpoint here, let's just set a breakpoint um, maybe over here. Yeah, I'll just run this, I'll let it break. 
I'll right click and I'll go to the disassembly. We can take a look at uh, what these actually do. So, unfortunately I can't zoom in in this view, which is kind of infuriating because you guys might have to full screen this or something or zoom in so that you can actually see. Um, okay, so if we take a look at position.getColumn3 um, versus uh, position.columns3, um, let's take a look at the actual functions. Uh, let's see, where is it calling it? Okay, so it's not calling it. Um, that's another cool thing. So okay, so this isn't there. There is no function call in this. All it's doing is it's setting certain registers. Essentially, what it's doing is it's going to copy whatever we got there into this. We could let's get out of here quickly and mark this as a uh, reference. I guess we could reference that as well. We're not going to there. So if we mark that as a reference, and we go to the disassembly. Okay, so now this is probably a bit better. Um, this is all it's doing. Yeah, it's going to basically grab the position like appropriate memory. Yeah, that's it. This get column is a bit different. It's going to call this get column thing. So if we go into that, we step into it and we take a look at what get column does. You can see that get column is doing a lot more than what we want. It's essentially going to copy, and you can, th so this is what it does in x86 assembly. That's what it does versus what we had before, which was a lot less. Um, like, look at this stuff. In fact, this is what it does, right? It's just it's an insane amount of stuff, and you can see it's actually it's setting registers, it's pull, it's pushing stuff, it's um, it's setting a bunch of registers to everything um, that we want, and it's it's essentially making a copy of everything, and it's just it's messy, it's terrible, it's definitely not what we want. And if we go back into here, we can see that, um, okay, quickly let's run through this. Lol, look at that, it's doing so much stuff. Let's go back in, <clears throat> and then all this is doing is that, yeah, much more efficient. Okay. So that's the idea of using unions and how much better they are. So this is episode 5.5. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the uh, comment section below. Next time, I'm going to take a look at shaders, and I will see you guys when I see you, which will be very, very soon. Again, if you want to catch these live streams live, just follow me on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash channel, and um, you can hang out in the pre-show and the post-show, which I hear is arguably better than the show itself. It's, it's not actually, but... Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Whoa.